All right, so as we go on, one of the things I want to pause and talk a little bit about in a highly discursive, sort of uh, fragmented way, is this idea of a framework, right, or, or a platform. And that leads us to this question of sort of what is Android, right? What is Android, you know? Android has a lot of different meanings depending on who you ask, right? There are clearly Android devices, right? That Android uh, both uh, makes some of its own. Google, this is a Google phone. And then also, uh, whoops, allows, it was a Google phone until I broke it while I did this demo. And then allows its code to be run on devices created by other manufacturers. So there's this ecosystem of Android devices there's a lot of code that runs on those devices written by people that work at Google to do common things like maintain connections to uh, network, uh, network resources and things like that to keep you connected. Um, but on some level from our perspective now as software creators, the most important aspect of Android to us is this idea of Android as a platform or a framework. So what is that? Well, think about it. You're Google and you're, you're getting started moving into this smartphone market. This is 10, 20 years ago. I don't know exactly when Android got started, but um, you're getting started with this. You know, you know there's some competitors out there. You know Microsoft's making a play in this area. You know Apple's got some devices that they're supporting too. Uh, they were pretty early, right? I mean, the iPhone was really a, a very, very transformative device. But you know, you're Google, you're catching up fast. What do you need to do to make that platform successful. Well, well, definitely you need good devices. Like that's an important part of it. Um, and you know, probably one of the reasons that Google started to make its own devices was, you know, to try to provide its its users, Android users, with really high quality phones. So that's a part of the Android ecosystem, right? But what's another more potentially more important part of that ecosystem is apps. You know, having you know being the dominant smartphone platform involves making sure that your users have access to the best applications and also keeping developers happy. So the Android development community is this massive community of like millions of people all over the world who build apps, some of them you know, for private companies, some of them are on their own. But on some level, as we're joining that community as software creators, you're now really responsible for the success of the Android ecosystem. Now, you know, 20 years ago, nobody knew that, you know, we'd be living in a world where there really aren't very many dominant players in the smartphone market. You might have thought there'd be more competition rather than it kind of really kind of narrowed down to really two big, two big giants, right? iOS and Android. At the time that these platforms got started, that these frameworks started to be created, people didn't really know that. And so there was this, and there is this continued attention on creating a good experience for developers. So for example, somebody at Google is paid to create or help maintain Android Studio, which you're using right now, this you know, highly complex piece of software. Now, most people that you know, use Android have no idea what Android Studio is and will never use it or install it. And that's fine, right? That's totally cool. They're Android users, you're an Android creator, and your uh, workflow now involves this piece of software called Android Studio. And if Android Studio is good, you'll be happy and you'll write more cool stuff more quickly. And if Android Studio is bad, then it's gonna be frustrating. Um, and you may you know, not enjoy working with it anymore. And it's kind of like, you know, if, let's say that you're a small company, you have to deploy both an Android app and an iOS app, and your Android development team is super happy because they love Android Studio and they think it's really cool and it helps their workflow. And your iOS team is really frustrated because they think Xcode is uh, a pile of garbage and you know it's really hard to get anything to work what app do you think is going to be better for your users right um so you know keeping developers happy building tools for developers is an important part of this but on some level there's this other really fundamental idea here which is this idea of a framework or a platform and the best analogy i can come up with it really isn't a great analogy from the world around us but the best analogy might be to think of automobiles as as a framework for moving from place to place. There are other ways to do it. You can walk, you can take a helicopter, but automobiles represent a framework for getting around. Now, the thing about a framework is it doesn't tell you where to go. So just because you have a car doesn't mean you have a destination, right? It doesn't tell you you have to get go to a particular place. It just enables you to get around. And in many ways, app frameworks, web development frameworks do the same thing. They enable your creativity. They enable you to build something. They don't tell you what it is, 
but they want to be as helpful as possible without knowing exactly what you're trying to do, right? So you're going to build an Android app. That's all they know. They're going to try to provide lots of code, lots of libraries, lots of documentation. Documentation is part of the framework. Um, lots of samples, lots of useful libraries, lots of, you know, uh, widgets and things like that, all to further your creativity, right? They want to make it easy. A good framework makes it easy to build cool things. So, you know, let's say I take an app that I want to build, let's say it's like a music player or whatever, a good framework allows me to build that app quickly and happily. A bad framework makes me work really, really hard to achieve the same result and frustrates me at every step along the way. And there's lots of things that can create a bad framework. Uh, missing pieces, like there's something that lots of apps need to do, but the framework doesn't provide it, and so they are all creating it themselves, right? Uh, bad documentation creates a bad framework. If I can't figure out how the framework works, not very useful, right? I'm not going to be able to do much. So all of this goes together into trying to create a really good development experience for, uh, for developers, right? A really good experience for people that are creating things. Frameworks also introduce conventions. So think about an automobile right? Every car has a steering wheel. That's a convention. Uh, every car, you know, moves forward and back basically and turns and but doesn't go directly sideways most of them, right? Um, these are conventions about how cars operate. Um, and we find similar conventions when we start talking about Android. So I, I have Android Studio open here as I'm, as I'm monologuing, uh, partly because I just want to show you one of these conventions, which we've already been looking at, right? Which is this idea of on create. So, uh, you know, the idea with an app is like you're going to have a screen, right? That probably seems pretty likely. When you build an app, there is going to be something that's going to be visible to a user. So that's a reasonable assumption. And when that screen starts up, it might need to do something. That's another reasonable assumption. So how do we support this, right? People design this. Like when Android was created, someone sat down and they had a meeting somewhere probably, or they worked on this and exchanged some drafts. And they said, okay, we're going to call this thing that's visible an activity. And there are specific things that happen to an activity during what they call its life cycle, right? The first thing, the first hook that you can override, the first place where the developer can be involved is this method called onCreate. Because when an activity starts up, frequently there's some code that needs to run to configure it properly, right? This is part of the Android platform or framework is this idea of onCreate and the activity life cycle. There's also great documentation that you can find on the Android website about all this stuff. So as we go forward, we're going to start, you know, pointing out, we're going to start, you know, uh, noticing things where the framework is. So the idea is, you know, one way to think about it is who calls on create, right? Who creates an instance of this activity and then calls the on create method, the Android framework, the code that you didn't write, the code that's there to help you. That's what did it, right? It created, you know, when, when a user performs a particular action, like they start up your app, you know, because of how the manifest is configured, it says, okay, the main activity is supposed to be shown. Okay, I'm going to create an instance of the main activity. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call its onCreate method. Because we overrode onCreate here, the code in here is going to run and it's going to do anything we want. And so there's this interesting mix of flexibility, right, in the sense of the apps, a good framework enables you to build an app that can do anything with you know, um, with conventions, right? And understanding how to use a framework frequently boils down to figuring out kind of what does it do for me, right? How to do a particular thing, like, okay, I wanna create a screen, well, what do I do that? What's, how is that represented in my, in my code? One of the things that you find when you start working on real projects and creating real things for people to use is that you frequently are gonna find yourself working with the framework. And frameworks come with a lot of documentation. And this is something that uh, particularly new creators, so we spend a lot of time when we're learning how to program programming, that's part of how we do it, right? And so it might sound weird for me to tell you that as you get more serious into this, you spend a lot less time programming and a lot more time reading, reading documentation, because someone gave you this incredibly powerful platform, framework, Android, for building apps. And part of your job as an Android developer is to understand the framework so that you can use it. Here's an analogy, again, an imperfect one. Let's go back to our automobile. Let's say you have to make a trip of a thousand miles, but you don't know how to drive or you don't know how to work this particular car. My, my wife and I once spent uh, a summer in Australia 
And uh, unbeknownst to the people that we rented the house from, the house came with a car, the car was the stick shift, and neither one of us really had any experience with the stick shift. We, we took like one lesson, but we got there, but it was kind of like, okay, we're up in this beautiful house, but we need food in the grocery stores 20 miles away. How are we gonna do it? Gotta drive this thing. So you kind of have, have to learn it. Now we could have walked, right? Um, but, the, but the idea is sometimes, you know, it makes sense to slow down. Sometimes people are like, oh, I want to get going. So they'll walk out the door and you're like, no, 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 there's a car right here. Just figure out how to use it and you'll get there way faster. Spend a few days just reading the manual and practicing in the driveway. And then you can go on that thousand mile journey and you'll get there like a hundred times faster, right? Um, so spending time reading documentation, understanding how things work is really, really valuable when you work with frameworks like Android, uh, when you work with frameworks like React for uh, front-end web development, right? Or iOS, if you decide to build apps for app, uh, Apple's smartphone platform, right? Like spending the time learning how the framework works, its different idioms, the way that it refers to things. So for example, I'm sure iOS has some concept that's very similar to an activity and some method that's very similar to onCreate because there's a commonality to how apps work on different devices, right? If if iOS and, and Android work totally differently, then you know, you'd never be able to switch phones because it'd be way too confusing, right? And so for developers, a lot of developers sometimes work on both platforms, and so they need to transfer knowledge a little bit too. So there are common patterns that you see, um, but they may be expressed differently in different frameworks, right? Different frameworks call things by different names and have different places where you need to insert code and, and figure out how to do things. Um, so anyway, as we go on, we're gonna talk more about the platform and framework as appropriate, right? So we're gonna talk about, when we talk about sort of how uh, the search bar works, right? The search bar is a component provided by the Android platform. We didn't have to implement it. All we need to do is figure out how to use it, right? And how to interact with the Android platform uh, and what information it provides about that component that allows us to utilize the information that it's providing to our app. So this is an example, what we're gonna do next, of understanding a little bit more about the Android platform and how we can use it to build powerful apps as simply as possible. But keep in mind, that is the goal of a good framework. In a good framework, you should, I should be able to build any app I want to in Android, but no matter what I build, the framework has my back, it provides a lot of useful features, and it limits the amount of code I have to write myself. Good frameworks do that, bad frameworks not so much. Um, Android is, a, is an excellent framework, and that's one of the reasons why it's been so successful.